Uh, we're going to have to buy him one. Uh, but anyway, Morris, wherever you are, uh, that's for you. He'll be back in 10 minutes and ask for it again, I'd imagine. Uh, Ian Burns, uh, the boy from nowhere, is with me. Uh, caught him having a coffee and a snack earlier on. Um, he's, he's a slacker. He does nothing at all but just hover around the town. You're a bit of a, a sort of lounge lizard, really, in the coffee bar. Yes, I, I would think so. It's, um, oh, it's particularly the patisseries that drove me here. You're a cake man. Well, we just played in the ghetto for you. What more could you want? Very good. That's good for Mickey Manchester. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 Ian, there's a blast from the past. I make one record as Mickey Manchester and everybody remembers it. I made go. a load as me and nobody remembers them. <laughs> Don't tell me you bought that record. No, I did listen to it and I uh, didn't buy it, unfortunately. I'm sorry. And what, unfortunately, it's, not, it's got a terrible talk of it in that makes me cringe every time uh, I hear yeah, it. Yeah. But listen, you, you've travelled the world. You're, a, you're an, an, an army boy. Uh, oh, your father was in the army. So that means you never settled, you went to different schools, you're a nomad. Exactly. Um, spent a lot of time up till I was 18, 19 years old, travelling around the world, Middle East, Germany. I was raised in Germany as a teenager on Radio Caroline and Radio Luxembourg. So. Ah, well, yeah, well I did a year out in Luxembourg in the late, late 70s and it was great. It was an interesting place to go. It's, um, I'm not sure I want to live there permanently. No, no, I've, I've passed through and around Luxembourg, but Germany was a great place to live. Cyprus was another one. Yeah. Did England, Scotland, and then when I went into professional life, I ended up traveling and living in, uh, in France, in New York. So I moved around a lot. This is really the first time I settled down. So, of all the places in all the world, Ian, you have to choose Maidenhead. Of all those glamorous places you've been, you've chosen Maidenhead. Explique. Uh, there's a very good reason, actually, and I think it's, it's down to why Maidenhead ex exists. Because the road from London to Bristol crosses the Thames Valley here. And, in fact, Maidenhead came into existence when the uh, first road bridge was moved down from Cookham to what was South Ellington uh, in 1280, somewhere around about then. And everything about Maidenhead is about the crossing there. Um, and then, of course, much later on, Brunel built the railway bridge across yeah. there. Well, it was an old Saxon road originally, before they called it the A4, the, the, the Saxons. But it, it was that great road west, wasn't it? It went out to, to the Bristol docks, to Bath. Exactly. Um, that, that's the, the whole point of, of Maidenhead. Um, and, of course, it was navigable up to Maidenhead. The name itself uh, was Maiden Highs, which means New Wharf. So yeah. the whole point about Maidenhead is all about the crossing of the, the river and the main road. Uh, two things, I was saying the other day, two things really changed this country forever. One was the Enclosure Act, uh, and the other was the railways. Now, w with the coming of the railways in the 1840s, the old, the, I mean, this was a coaching town. Sometimes 90 coaches a day will come through here. Uh, phenomenal trade, very busy, people making money. Come the railways, uh, and that's the end of that. A lot of people went out of business, including the highwaymen, of course. Exactly. Uh, 1839, when Brunel's Bridge was opened, is really the, the death of the, the coaching days, the beginning of major transport um, on the first main line, really, that, that was built in the world, carrying passengers regularly. And, and brought people out here, I mean, before the railways, there were, there were pretty less than a 1,000 people living here. By 1900, you got 15,000, and the graph, of course, today has rocketed up. Yes, and, and it's, um, it's a secret gem, really. It's quite a small place. Um, it's dwarfed by Reading to the west, and then slough to the east. Uh, not many people are aware of Maidenhead, but <laughs> once we decided to live here a year ago, uh, we found it fantastic. What, what would you say is the secret hidden gem? What, what is a little nugget of Maidenhead that, that nobody knows? Um, I wouldn't say that nobody knows, but the, the point of it really is the river. It's all about the, the culture of Maidenhead. It stems from going up and down the river, the inns, the old inns. Um, that people are still going to and of course the high street we're, we're sitting on where the A4 really used to cross the river and it's only the new bypass that, that came in recently so we're literally sitting on the London to Bath Road so it, it's inns and, and all the traffic running through it um, the secret bit, um, you're aware of the King Charles bit there we go His last yeah, you tell, us, tell us the story about him, yes, uh, the Greyhound yes, which yeah. is now Nat West Bank um, his last meeting with his three children witnessed by Oliver Cromwell before he was taken off to the dungeons and executed. Yeah, and got Princess Elizabeth, his daughter, was there. And they, 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 where we're sitting here, they'd have strewn uh, flowers and boughs from trees uh, in his path. And Cromwell must have thought, hang on, they like this chap. Uh, yes. <laughs> it's a bit ironic that later on, um, Charles II comes back and turns the, 
the tables. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, fascinating. We could we could sit here on the bench and and talk all day uh, about this kind of thing. But Ian, it's great that you're here. Great that you love Maidenhead, and uh, you know we'll we'll find out a few more interesting facts about it. Have you settled here now? Is this your place? Uh, we find no reason in our future to leave here. Excellent. That is that's like the end of Great Expectations. They saw they, they saw no shadow of their future parting. Yes. It's a great line. I like that. Wonderful. Excellent. Uh, what was your What was your job when you were when you were working when you were gainfully employed before you became? Uh, you know. I started life designing nuclear power stations and then spent thirty years in the IT industry, and I'm still doing consulting around IT. Nuclear power stations the way forward. I, I've been watching uh, with alarm over the last two or three days the uh, the leakage at Fukushima. Yeah, nuclear power stations are the way forward, but uh, using uranium as a fuel is, is the wrong thing because of its inherent dangers. But people should look up and read about thorium reactors because those are very stable and a lot less problems with radioactivity and waste. Shale gas? Uh, shale gas, I would rather turn to having the renewables and a rational nuclear program than shale gas because we'll just be digging up more uh, problems for the future. Mm. They will be also been talking. I was talking with a, uh, somebody recently with an engineer who said there are deep holes in the ocean. If they can put something down there, there's so much movement down there that if they can get something down there that's stable enough, they can use that for power as well. Uh, yes, there, there are lots of opportunities for new technologies, and actually the UK should be grabbing them because, like Brunel, we're, we've always been at the heart of new technologies moving the way forward. We don't seem to grab enough, do we? No. And as an engineer, I'd like to see us do more. Yeah, well, don't, don't do nothing. You can be you can be our leader. Fantastic. Good stuff. There's Ian chatting to us. Uh, the Bee Gees, Massachusetts, on the way. We're live from Maidenhead this morning.